up and running again, picking up where we left off yesterday. Uh, talked about uh, Maradona like kicking the ball up in the air. Nice knuckle straight up, straight down. Initial position was 0 3. Quadratic relationship. And I suppose, you know, we talked about symmetry. So over here, after four seconds, it's back to three, catching it on the foot. And that's the end of that experiment. But if the ball kept going, it's going to hit the floor, right? Which is a height of zero. And if we have an equation, oh my God, we can uh, we can find that number pretty easily. And I think I said it took two seconds to hit a height of 67 feet, a nice canned situation here. So we can see the numbers working. And we're beginning to look at how to construct these quadratic relationships, how to numerically work with them, symbolically work with them. And so there's our vertex. And what do we have? We have movement back of minus two units on the x-axis to get to zero uh, because symmetry and all the pattern, numerical pattern emanates from this location. And I hope you can intuitively see why. And so if I went from two to zero, well, that's really minus two units of change, but quadratics, when we square minus two times minus two, we get four units of change. And I don't want to move up four units because up four units doesn't take me to 67. So I get rid of that four units of change. And what I really want is the change from 67 to three, which is minus 64. That's a nice number again, right? So my height as a function of time, we might as well bring in t instead of x, just to change things up a little bit. So height as a function of time, time being seconds, is determined by minus 60. Well, I haven't done it out yet. Minus 16, t minus 2 squared plus 67. And on day one, we said the origins of this discipline are rectangular. Obviously, somebody didn't draw a rectangle as the first mathematical moment on planet Earth. But so much of everything we do comes from that relationship. It's foundational. Okay. So we got to play with some rectangles here, especially with this construction. So let's play with some rectangles here. Let's start with something we know. I think we know that three times four is 12. Let's look at it rectangularly because this could be length times width equals area. I think that's probably the, one of the most famous products in the world. And of course we can change that to rate times time equals distance, which has a lot to do with things like this that you might see later in your life. Rate times time equals distance. Okay, I took a little uh, poetic license there. All right, liberty. So three, let's call this um, one unit. Let's just say that that's one unit. And let's get two more, and that's twice that size. And let's look at uh, construction here, one unit. And let's get something three times that size. And let's just look at that area, which has to be 12, three times four. Well, we got a one times one. We got a three times one. We got a one times two. And we got a two times three, which is really, you know, if I break this up into that kind of construction, let's see, where, where am I at here? Six units, right? So we got six units. One plus three is four, two plus six is eight, four plus eight is 12. Hopefully you can see that that's true. So this is called the length, one plus two. This is the width, three plus, well, one plus three. Mechanically, that has to equal 12. Three times four equals 12. We can see that that is true. So how does that happen? Well, the distributive property really, on steroids, we've got one, this number, times one plus three, which is what I did, one times one plus three, there it is right there. And then we have two times one plus three, and that's the lower part here, two times one plus three. 
And people in this uh, business like to call that foiling. So one times one is one, one times three is three, and two times one is two, and two times three is six. And if you look at that, I'm not gonna take time, but I'm sure you can see that that adds up to 12. All right, so now let's go to the abstract. Let's look at uh, a new situation. Let's look at x plus four times x plus five. I've got x, which could be any distance. And I've got an x here because I've got x squared. There it is. There's x squared. And then I'm going to add, let's make the top x plus 5. And let's say that this is 5 units. All right, each one of these is 1. Okay, so I've got x times 5. So I know that's 5x. And where does it come from? Remember, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's an X, that's an X, that's an X, that's an X, that's an X. Those look like like terms to me. And here I have four, one, two, three, four. Well, I got a quadratic, I got a four-sided figure, quad Latin for four. And each of these is one, 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 but we're gonna say four over here. And so what do I have? I actually have one times X, which is this, Another one X, another one X, and another one X. And I think you need to see this. And I got four times five. So I got, oh, nice. This is nice now that I have this, right? And I think if you count those squares up, you're going to get 20. So what do I have? Well, I can see X squared. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine X's. And I can see 20. And you take a good hard look at that. And I think you'll see some patterns. So I hope you do. I hope the numbers speak for themselves. I hope I don't have to say anything. Because if I don't have to say anything, you're actually being a mathematician now. You're analyzing something and looking for patterns. And if I don't say anything and you figure something out, then you just had some mathematical thought processes occurring in your cerebellum. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe there's different. Sure, but anyway, whole another discussion. All right, so where am I going with that? Oh yeah, we're going back to what we're looking at, which is this kick the ball up in the air problem. Remember, I got the ball three feet high. Can't get my leg up anymore. Maybe I can a little bit better. Boom, straight up after two seconds, maximum height, comes back down. Okay, so we're looking at H of T equals minus 16, t minus 2 squared. And you go ahead and do t minus 2 times t minus 2. You can do that out sometime on your own. You'll be doing it every day anyway. Plus 67. I'm just going to take the shortcut. I know I'm squaring that. I know I'm going to get double that product. Well, I might as well show it. You're just learning this. And you see that I've got minus two times T and another minus two times T in that foiling process. So whatever that product is, I'm gonna double it. And then I'm gonna square the last term. And then I'm gonna add 67. And if I take my time with that, then H of T is equal to minus 16 T squared plus 64 T. Minus 16 times 4 is minus 64. Minus 64 plus 67 is 3. Oh, where have I seen that number before? Oh, yeah, that was the initial condition. Right? That's where it was. I shouldn't draw that part because the ball was stationary. Although I think we can intuit that this is a parabola. And we said that. Four gets us three because of the symmetry. We can check that out. Let's put a four in. Four minus two, two, two squared, four. What's minus 16 times four plus 67? Yeah, that's three. Take my word for it. So what is this 64? We talked about it briefly yesterday. It was actually the force of the ball, the, the initial force I put on the ball, which means that... Uh, Honestly, that means I can write the equation of a line right here. At that instant, if I zoom in, I've got 64 times x of t. I'm doing t, t minus zero plus three. Sorry, I'm not writing that. 
but that's the initial force. And up here, the rate of change is zero. <laughs> well, that makes sense because the ball seems to, well, Air Jordan, just stop before it starts coming down. I don't know why it came down. Oh yeah, I guess it's the force of gravity, which we'll look at in more detail later. So this actually tells me something about the physics of what we're looking at. Uh, of course, it's not written in meters, which the rest of the world is working with, but that's okay. So moving on from here, the whole purpose of this was to look at, oops, I gotta move the computer here. I don't wanna have to start all over again. I do that too many times. So we're basically trying to get a better understanding of this critter. And I am suggesting that that is the most important thing that you take into that brain of yours and start to think about minus B over 2A. So let's actually look at what that is. Uh, but before we do that, let's go back to this. So this was a very more important time. This was a very important time. Um, so the question is, do you think you can find out what that one is if you didn't have it displayed? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully you would say, oh, it's between, we talk about axis and symmetry. It's between these values, zero and four. That's how we could get that if we had that information. What if we didn't have this information? How do we get that? This is how you get it. So let's look at it. First, we have this minus 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 3. Okay, minus b. Well, b is 64. So I'm doing minus 64 over what? 2 times negative 16, which happens to be minus 64 over minus 32. And lo and behold, we have very easily found the most important x, we usually work in terms of x, value of a quadratic. Not hard to do. And if I have that most important value, then I can sketch a quadratic extremely easily. Now, I think I missed something. Uh, oh, I want to look at this from a different perspective right now, from the perspective of products. <laughs> rather unconventional way right, of doing this. Now, I haven't shown you yet why I can do that. And there's a, a real important geometric lecture that I've got to give you, and not right now, no need to do it right now. You're just trying to build some skill. So let's look at this from a slightly different perspective, from the product perspective, minus 16 T, squared is a product. It's minus 16 times t squared. We talked about products yesterday. I think I asked somebody what was 7.387 times 4.96. And I don't think anybody in the class could do it. Shame on you. But then I said, well, can you do 7.387 times zero? Well, gosh, yes. Of course you can. Right? And this class is based on zeros. And what? And ones. Okay. And that's what we're doing in every conversion that we've actually, well, we've only been at this two days. Right? We're already marching along pretty well here. All right. So let's actually look at that from the perspective of products. Here's the products right here, those first two terms. I have minus 16 times t squared, which is a product. I have 64 times T, which is a product, and I have plus three way out here. And one thing we want to learn in math is how to rewrite things. And we're actually beginning to do that. We're beginning to look at how do you write this sum as a product. And I've only said it a couple of times thus far. I think twice. I like to keep track of how many times I say things. Okay, And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask you the question. What's the first rule in writing products? I don't think anybody's going to say what the first rule is, but maybe, maybe somebody does. And it is take out what's common. So let's look at this minus 16 times T times T 
plus 64 times T. Well, take a moment, ask yourself, what's common there? I think T is. So let's write this in that fashion. Oh, and you know what? 16 actually goes into 64 because 64 is four times four times four, or cubed. And there's your 16 times four. Ah, so I can actually take minus 16 T out and do what we were doing over there a minute ago, that foiling process. And so minus 16 T times what gives you minus 16 T squared? Obviously T. And uh, minus 16 times what gets you 64? Actually, it's minus four. Okay, so minus four times minus 16 gets us a positive 64. All right, so let's look at h of t. I'm going to erase this a little bit. But I'm erasing this. I always do that. And let's look at writing h of t in this fashion. And left, got to get more space. h of t, height as a function of time, it can now be written this way. All right, and I'll write it above here just to see that you're trying to learn how to do some of these things. Minus 16t squared uh, plus 64t plus 3. Take a moment to look at that. And I hope you can see that um, that's true. And coming back to this concept of 7.38 times 0, okay. And even taking it a step further, length times width equals area. Yes, I got to talk about that for a minute. Let's take length times width equals 20. Can you tell me what numbers I used? Probably right now, some of you said four times five. You'd be right, that's 20. Some of the rest of you might have said two times 10. Maybe somebody could have said one times 20. All of those things equal 20. So does x times 20 over x. And I like to put Joan of Arc in here. Oh, that doesn't sound good. This brings back. Never mind. Four images. All right. But cancels and you get 20. So there's an infinite number of ways to write the product equaling 20. But as soon as I drop that two, we're in a whole nother world. If length times width equals zero, then either length equals zero or width equals zero. It has to be true. One of those has to be true. And we're at that right now. We're at length times width plus three. We got that length width. All right, so what numbers make that zero? Well, I got to have one of the factors. Notice I used the word factor now, and I hadn't used it before. I don't like to use the word factor because when I ask students what factoring is, I don't get too many responses. That makes sense. It's not easy to talk about mathematics. So I prefer to say turning sums and differences into products for a while. And I've just done that. This was a sum. This is now a product. All right, so let's highlight that product. Keep going around the room. Let's keep going around the room. And I would hope that we could look at this and say, okay, it's a negative 16 T squared. Cup shape down. Okay. And what makes length minus 16 T squared, uh, I'm sorry, just T, that was one of the factors, with T minus four, can you tell me what makes this product equal zero? Two times when T is zero, zero times negative 16 is zero, and zero times anything is zero, and four. And if I make this function plus three, well, then that's going to get me zero, three, and four, three. And if I've got those two numbers, then the average of those two symmetric values, zero plus four, cut in half, gets me that two. Seems to be true. And it looks like my... Camera's a little fuzzy here, but oh Lord. Uh, God, let's see if it improves. Yes. 
Okay, we're going to live with it. All right, which means that now I can sketch quadratics pretty darn easily. So let's try one. And then we'll practice them the rest of the term. Generally speaking, there are shortcuts to everything in life, but let's look at uh, 2x squared plus 20x, and let's do plus 3, because we know that this is a cup shape up. I know that 0, 3, I know that 0, 3 is on the increasing side, and I will show you why at some point. But right now I know it's on that side, but let's pretend we don't know. So I now know my X value is going to be negative here, right? But how do I find the X value? Minus B over 2A. Okay, we'll pretend we don't know that right now, but these are product, right? So what number do we want to plug in to make that a zero? Obviously zero. If I put a zero here, oh, those go, and that gives me three. But 2x squared plus 20x plus 3, 2x squared plus 20x plus 3, where's the most important part of this discussion? The vertex. How can I find that quickly and easily? Minus b over 2a gets me that x value. In this case, it's minus 20 over 2 times 2 is 4. I now know this is negative 5. I can plug negative five in for X because that's going to tell me the Y that I get. What I mean, I've got an equation already. I'm just trying to rewrite it. I'm just trying to rewrite it. Let me get this a little shorter. So what do we now know? We know that that's X plus five squared is how we want to write it because we're at a minimum and the minimum area of a square is boom, boom, zero, right? I can keep making, and I want this to act like zero times zero. All right, so when I put negative five in, I get my zero times zero, my minimum. All right, now I'm gonna put negative five in quickly, negative five times 20, 100 minus 100. I know that's gotta be 50 plus three because there's this nice two to one ratio. I probably should have let you find that out for yourself. Minus 50 plus three gets me minus 47. And yeah. I know zero gets me three. Anytime you want to find a y-intercept. And so that's, you know, that's my, somewhere in here is my origin. Right? Anytime you want to find a y-intercept, plug zero into the calculation. You'll hear me say that every day for the rest of the term. Okay, do I have this centered well enough? All right, so uh, it's easier to sketch and then write in graphic form. So what do I have here? Well, I can take the two. I can take it. Right? It's right, it's handed to me. I need, right now I have X squared, I need two of them. Well, I hope that makes sense. And also I now know what happens when I put a negative five in, I get minus 47. Now, how, we, how do we do this uh, from scratch? Let's say we don't have any of this. Well, we see that and we go, oh, well then that's X plus five squared minus 47. And then if I go over five units, I should go up 25 when I square but I don't go up 25. I actually go from negative 47 to three, which is 50. And then you can see that multiplication by two from a different perspective. All right, so I'll do one more for you quickly here. Sketching, uh, let's try a negative this time. Let's do minus three X squared. Let's look at minus three X squared. Let's look at uh, how about 12 X plus 12 X and how about plus seven? All right, so what do you know? What do I know? I know it's cup shaped down. I know I want to do minus 12 over two times negative three. Well, that's minus 12 over minus six. That tells me that's a two. That's helpful. I'll throw a two in and see what comes out when I throw a two in. Two times two squared is squared before you multiply. Four times negative three is negative 12. That means without looking, the next one should be 24. Oh yes, two times 12 is 24 plus seven. I can cut this number in half because minus 12 plus 24 is 12 and 12 plus seven is 19, boom. Now I just need the y-intercept. I need one more point so that I have an accurate graph. Okay, how do I find the y-intercept? You heard it again. 
you throw a zero in, you get 70. Zeros to the left. On the increasing side, where do I know that? Right there. That second term tells me that. All right. So there are quicker ways to get this, and we will develop them, but that's pretty quick. And if you can learn that, you're in great shape. You don't have to look at all those shortcuts unless you like you know, examining things like that. All right, so that's the end of this lecture. Uh, I don't know how long it took, but whatever. It's something you needed to hear and get started on. And so on your worksheet today, you're going to put a quadratic in graphing form. Hopefully get some success with it within the next couple of weeks where you look at it and you go, oh, I can do that. All right, and, and, and. Bye-bye.